Greetings, my name is Monty Martin, and welcome to Isadora 101. In this series of video workshops, I'll be introducing you to the core features of Isadora 3. Today, we're going to learn how to build our very first Isadora patch. In the process, I'm going to introduce you to the basic workflow that you will use every time you work with Isadora. This includes importing media, adding actors into a scene, playing a movie, and getting a preview into up so that we can see the results of what we've put into the Isadora patch. These core concepts apply to almost anything you'll create with Isadora, from projection designs for live theater to interactive installations, dance productions, and much, much more. If you want to follow along with me as I'm working, you'll want to make sure that you've downloaded the latest version of Isadora 3 from the Troikatronics website. I've also prepared a package of example files and sample media that you can use while you're working along with me today. Check the links in the description below to find them on the Troikatronics website. Now, I might work a little bit quickly sometimes, so don't be afraid to hit pause or backtrack if I'm going a little bit too quickly. Ready to get started? Well, let's power up Isadora and get to work. All right, so I powered up Isadora, and by default, when we start working with Isadora, it opens up a blank, brand new Isadora project file. Now, we can use Isadora to build some really gorgeous generative graphics, but when we're just starting out, it's best to use some pre-recorded digital video footage. More often than not, in my own projection design work, I use this kind of footage, whether it's ones that I've created in animation applications or Photoshop, or that I've sourced by filming it as part of the production process. When we work with these digital assets, Isadora is the place where it all comes together for the very first time when we're ready to use it in our show itself. Before we can work with any of our digital media files, we're going to need to import them into Isadora. Now, when you're working in Isadora, the media bins over here on the right-hand side show us all the assets that we have currently imported into our project. As you can see, there's nothing much here right now. So let's bring some files in so that we can start working with them. I'm gonna open up this folder here on my desktop called Isadora 101 Media Files. These are the files that you can download by following the links below. You'll see in here, I've got a wide range of files. I have some sound wave files. I have some PNG images, as well as some MOV video files. What I can do is I can select one or even all of these files, and I can simply drag them from Finder or a folder on my desktop and drop them right into the media bin in Isadora. And Isadora automatically imports all these files. And you'll notice that Isadora even sorts them into video files, sound samples, and picture files as well. Isidore also assigns each of these assets a number, and you can see the file name and a thumbnail as they're listed in the media bin. This will become very important in a few moments when we actually start working with these files because Isidora refers to digital media assets not by their file name, but by the number they have in this media bin. So whenever we're working with an actor or other element of Isadora that refers to our media files, we'll want to remember what their numbers are, their media numbers are, so we can work with them very, very quickly. Now that we've imported some media into Isadora, we actually need to start working with them. And this is where the actors come into play. Actors are the building blocks of our Isadora projects, and they handle almost every major creative process that we'll do with Isadora. Each actor is a module, a little block of code that handles and performs specific functions such as playing movies, sounds, or images, rendering that video, sound, and image out to a connected display, or responding to and processing the input from a live video camera, microphone, or sensor, or manipulating that video and data in some sort of creative way. Now, many actors in Isidore are self-sufficient and perform their functions all on their own, but most actors are at their best when they're working together with other actors to generate that audiovisual content and manipulate digital media in real time. There are hundreds of actors in Isadora, and you can find them over here on the left-hand side of the screen in the actor toolbox. We can filter the actors by their functionality by using the toolbox filters at the top of the toolbox itself, S dividing the actors between our video sources, video renderers, the mouse and keyboard actors, calculation and control actors, and actors of a variety of functionalities. To begin with, 
we're going to work with one of the most common actors that we'll use in Isadora, and that is the movie player. And we can find that under the video sources. If you're having trouble finding a specific actor, even when you're using the filters, you can also use the search box up here in the top and type in the name of the actor that you're looking for. Usually within the first three or four letters, you'll find that actor there in the list. And now we need to bring the actor into the scene editor. We do this by clicking the actor in the actor toolbox and then moving the mouse pointer so that we can drop it into the scene editor. You actually don't need to click and drag. You simply click once in the toolbox to pick it up and then move the pointer over into the scene editor and click again to drop the actor into the scene. Now you can see that this actor is this funny little block with a bunch of little nodes along the right hand side and the left hand side. We can click on an actor to move it around within the scene editor. For the most part, it doesn't quite matter where the actors are located in the scene editor so much as you know how you've got things organized in place. The currently selected actor is always highlighted in blue, and we can actually drag a box to select multiple actors at the same time, and we can hit the backspace key or the delete key to delete them. I'm going to put this movie player back into my scene though. You'll see here that the actor has a huge list of all these different properties. These are all the different ways that we can manipulate what the actor does in real time, or we can just preset them and leave them that way. Each actor in Isadora has several actor input properties on the left hand side. You use these properties to control how the actor behaves, from telling the movie player what video to play and what it's supposed to do with it, like how fast it's supposed to play or how much of the movie it should play. The actor then sends the results of this to its output on the right hand side so that other actors can use it. In the case of the movie player, this input property right here at the top called movie tells the movie player what video file it's supposed to be playing. And this output here, the video output, lets me pass that video on to another actor. So let's get the movie player actually playing one of our movies. You'll see up here, I've got my video files that I've imported into Isadora. And this first one is called Earth with Sun SD Photo JPEG MOV. And Isadora has listed this as movie file one. So I'm going to go to my movie player. I'm going to click on the field beside the movie input property, and I'm going to type one. That's going to tell Isadora to start playing that movie. You'll notice right away that the movie player lights up. This green bar down here shows me that something is going on, and it kind of looks like a playhead moving through the, the movie itself. This movie is only 10 seconds long, and so once it gets to the very end, it starts right back at the beginning again. You can see that a few things over here on the output have lit up as well, indicating to me what position the movie is currently in as well. Now, on its own, this movie player isn't going to do too much. I'm not going to be able to see what I've created unless I use another actor to send this movie out to a display. This is where I'm going to want to use another actor called the projector actor. Now, I'm going to show you a really fun shortcut that I love using when I work with Isadora. When I double click the scene editor, I get a little search box right away. It's a shortcut to the actor toolbox, and I can start typing in the name of the actor that I'm looking for. In this case, the projector actor. I click it or press enter, and it's immediately added to the scene. This is such a fast way to bring actors into Isadora, and I use it all the time myself. Now you'll see the projector actor is a little bit unique. It doesn't have any outputs because the projector actor is a final destination of sorts. It can only receive inputs because anything coming into the projector actor is going to get sent to whatever projector or display my computer is connected to in real life. Just like plugging a VCR into a television set, I need to plug my movie player into my projector actor to actually get these two things connected. And I do this by clicking the little green dot at the top of the movie player, which is the actor property that I want to link. I'm going to click this green dot and you'll notice that a little tail appears attached to my mouse pointer. This is the cable that I'm going to use to plug my movie player into my projector. 
Now, I could try plugging my movie player into any one of these actor properties on the projector actor, but you'll notice that each output actually has a specific type. And if I try to do that, it tells me, no, not going to work. I need to connect like outputs to like inputs. In this case, this output on this movie player is a video stream. So I need to connect it to a video stream input on the projector actor, which is the one right here at the top. I click once and they're plugged into each other and that red little cable line is disconnected from my mouse and now connected into the projector actor. These two actors are now linked together and you can see that because that red cable has now turned green indicating that data, in this case video, is passing between the two actors. Now, we can combine actors together in almost an infinite number of ways, but this basic principle of linking an actor's output to the inputs of another actor is how we get actors working together in Isadora and means that everything that you create with Isadora is more than just the sum of its parts. Actors working together can form chains of multiple actors, bringing images, video, sound, and data from one actor to the next with each one doing its part to process that information before it hits the final result and is output to a speaker system, to a projector, or is used in some other actor in some other way within Isadora. Now, we've linked our movie player to our projector actor, but we're still not seeing anything yet. Well, that's because we need to actually tell Isadora, hey, send this out to a display or show me a preview of what's going on. This is really easy to do. All I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the menu at the top of the screen, click output. And if I was connected to a projector now and I wanted to see this for real out there in the world, I would click show stages. But because my computer is not currently connected to an external display, I'm going to actually click for stage preview. And you'll see this little window now appears showing this rotating earth. It's playing the movie. This is a preview of what is going to be happening on my Isadora stage. In other words, what I'm going to be sending out to the projector to see it. And there you have it. This is the basics of working with Isadora. We import some media into the media bins. We add some actors into our scene editor, link them together, and see the results either by using the stage preview or showing our stages. These are the fundamentals of working with almost every Isadora project and is the perfect starting point for today. Now that wraps it up for today, but going forward, we're going to learn how we can take these very core principles and expand them to create something really rich and robust in Isadora with just a few more extra steps. Be sure to leave a comment below if you have any questions. And in the meantime, if you want to learn even more, follow the links in the description below to visit the Troikatronics website, which has tons of helpful articles, tutorials, and more to help you get the most out of Isadora. Be sure to stop by the Isadora community forums as well, where creators worldwide share their knowledge and techniques. And of course, we've got plenty more videos right here on YouTube for you to check out in the meantime. Thank you so much for joining me today, and we'll see you at the next workshop.